day and age where language is thought and expressed in new ways, what is creative writing and how important is it? Hello everyone, this is Mommy Happy of Teach My Child, an online multi-platform dedicated to helping children maximize their potential. In today's video, we will talk about creative writing for kids, an interview with international award-winning poet, Professor Joel M. Toledo. Hello, hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Professor Toledo holds a master's degree in poetry from the University of the Philippines in the Leman. Author of five books of poetry and editor of several poetry anthologies, he was a winner of the UK's Bridport Prize, the Carlos Palanca Awards for Poetry, and the NCCA Writer's Prize. His poems have been published in the Iowa Review, the Prairie Schooner, and the Washington Square Review. In 2011, he was granted residencies by the Rockefeller Foundation in Bellagio, Italy, and the International Writing Program in Iowa, USA. He is currently working on a new collection of poems. Hi, sir. Hello, happy. It's been it's almost been two decades. <laughs> yeah, can imagine when were you my student back in two um, 2002 to 2003, you were our assistant God. homeroom teacher. <coughs> English section. So old. <laughs> I yeah, shall yeah. wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled, <laughs> said Annie Elliot. Anyway. Okay, hey, sir. Sir, what is creative writing? Oh, really? We go straight to the yes, <laughs> question. <laughs> um, creative writing, essentially, well, I'm just going to wing it, okay? As far as I'm the way I look or approach creative writing is that it's a kind of writing that essentially champions the imagination and happy. So the idea is it's not the same as the other types of writing where you do it, I guess, for a job. Let's say you're working as a reporter for a newspaper. Creative writing essentially allows you to cultivate and harvest whatever's in your imagination. So it's a fun thing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a thing that a lot of people would do usually in their spare time, to more or less get to know the world better or get to know themselves better. There's a sort of introspection that comes with it, and it allows you to create things. As the operative word being creative, it assumes some artfulness. What are the usual subjects? <laughs> I'm sorry. What are the usual subjects of creative writing? Usual subjects. Uh, Anything under the sun really happy because because it's powered or propelled by the imagination. You can you can just see that uh, you can write, for example, about a hose, for example, that you use for watering the plants to the clouds or a memory um, to a particularly complex uh, philosophical question. Anything under the sun really is something you can creatively write about. Sir, how important is form in creative writing? Form. Um, it depends because if you consider form in, say, a poem, there's a particular traditional set of standards, right? As opposed to, say, a short story where te technically when you read a short story or novel, you're reading until the end of the page, until it spills over to the next. But in poetry, you have to... In particular types of poetry, of course, the ones that we're more... Uh, I'm familiar with, there are so-called stanzas to cut the lines, there are verses, it's just like a song. So to answer it more directly, form is key to writing creatively, but it depends on what genre you're writing. Let's say you're writing a short story, it's a bit looser, but if you are writing a poem, there is a more strict foundation or a set of standards. Sir, so between form and content which one is more important it, um, it, it's an unfair question because both are important happy I, I guess what what is the vessel if it doesn't hold the water uh, what i'm trying to say is if if it does not have something really done creatively the form can only do so much but um, because I guess it's creative writing, the more important question should be how important is the language? Mm. And, and, and I think if you really consider the language, that is where creative writing excels. Because it isn't like a textbook thing, or it's not a Hallmark greeting card, it's not a, a Facebook comment or post. It's something you... Um, um, essentially, you're heightening it 
that's the point of creative writing is to heighten the language. So I guess beyond the constraints of form and what you want to write about, there is a particular set of rules that come with harnessing or romancing the language, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, sir, quest, another question. So now let's move on to the benefits of creative writing. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think creative writing will benefit kids? As a form of expression, happy, I guess it's very, very important that kids develop this or harness, if not develop, because they have it. They have, as kids, we have the power of innocence, the power of great imagination. Putting that down on paper allows you to, at some point, uh, really harness or get to the b better concepts of how the world should be looked at or certain perspectives that are interesting. Mm -hmm. However, you do notice that there are no, say, pro mill kids who are creative writers, right? There are. There's mm -hmm. a dancer, there may be a, a painter. A, a, yeah, a prodigy using the piano or a painter, but notice that there is almost none who are writing oh, creatively. Do you know why? It's because Creative writing is something that demands a, a bit of restraint and experience. So on the one hand, it's important to train a child to write down what he, what he or she or they are reading. But mm -hmm. at some point, they have to learn the restraint and appreciate criticism and maybe go through certain channels like workshops to fine tune that. Now. And notice that I'm not saying that it's not allowed. I'm just saying that it's hard for a child to get something that a lot of, I guess, the the critics out there would, would consider as something mature because always there's always this kind of hinge in creative writing that it has to be mature enough or experience driven for it to be really, to, for it to really flourish as a creative writing example. Uh, well, all I'm saying here is that if, if certain people think that, say, a music prodigy or a painting prodigy is something or someone who is born with the talent, creative writing is something you develop in time. You Writers are made. They're not born. Mm -hmm. and, and in that sense, happy. Creative writing is best started young, but you have to cultivate it as you grow older. So... In a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is you can, of course, begin creative writing at a young age, but more, more importantly, I guess you should, alongside developing it, is complementing it with tons and tons of reading. Hmm. So that will also widen their vocabulary. Exactly. exactly. And they can As write you widen more. Your vocab, you can gain more of the instruments you need to voice out those important thoughts. Sir, I appreciate in your um in the first part of your response, you mentioned about restraint. Yeah. I think it's very important for kids to learn about restraint, not just in writing, but also in other parts of their life. Right. And I so, guess um, to, to pursue that tangent, it's a combination of both restraint and focus. As, as children, you have to understand that there are certain uh, parameters by which your world um, revolves around with which your world revolves. But it's important to, to understand that as you get better at something, as for example, in particular creative writing, it's not enough that you are good at putting together the words. There has to be the content, that that level of restraint, as you put it, mm -hmm. surrounding the form and, and what you have to say. And I guess, if, if I may, one more, the restraint pa part is the one that has more to do happy with the form because mm. the, the restraint is the constraint the form is there the language is there to house the so-called house the creative input that you come from your experience that's and the sir, child i can imagine you mentioned perspectives so right. by reading poetry they uh they uh explore different emotions right they can better understand how it is to be sad in mm -hmm. grief happy ecstatic so i think yeah. it also helps them better control their emotions if ever that's true that's they right. can put whatever they're feeling into writing say a loved one has passed away so they right. can put all of their feelings in that form as opposed to being destructive 
Exactly. If you put it that way, definitely uh, poetry and other types of creative writing genres will teach children discipline and I guess what you say is restraint and maybe focus as well. Sir, I've read about uh, writing prompts. Right. Do you think you can apply the writing um, writing prompts technique to kids? Can they actually True, definitely. Follow? In fact, happy. I remember maybe a few years since you graduated from the high school that I was invited to talk to the grade school and I gave them a certain prompt. I can just mention the prompt to you. Sure, sure. And they loved it. The, the prompt goes, they have to write a quatrain, which is technically a, a poem compo- composed of four lines. That's it. I just asked them to write a four-line poem. And, and the way it, it would work is... I, I give them a blank. I, I give them a prompt like, in the blank of my imagination. Hmm. And then uh, there are particular uh, little instructions to follow. Mm-hmm. So that allows the child, for example, to put in there whatever word she or he thinks is appropriate, uh, poetic enough for the experience of writing poetry. And then they just the, add the next three lines. Then, um, in fact, you, the other three lines also have little prompts. Like the second line should be a combination of two or more of the senses. The third line should be a matter-of-fact statement. And the fourth line is uh, a statement about the future. Now, I, I, I know that's quite a mouthful. But for example, this is if, in my – I'll just construct one uh, quatrain in my mind. For example, in the hypothalamus of my mind – I can touch the sweet smell of your hearing. Mm-hmm. It is um, four twenty in the afternoon. Maybe we'll see each other again tomorrow. Th- that thing, whatever, no matter how seemingly random it sounds, is a poem because it follows particular convention of writing poetry that people tend to forget. I know uh, that that's a big thing I just suddenly <laughs> put into the interview, but Actually, sir, I, I, appreciate... I think you and children will appreciate that kind of thing. Exactly, sir. It also applies their knowledge of science, like hypothalamus. Exactly. Uh, it makes them think I, I about. Just put in the word hypothalamus there because just to show <laughs> that it's okay to use a very scientific word. Mm-hmm. So they are able to apply lessons from different subjects. I mean, not just right. reading. And also, they're thinking about words that will fit into a diff- into certain contexts, certain rules, right. so they're becoming more resourceful in a way. And they can harness their concept of associations because poetry it for it can be considered as a particular kind of writing that allows you to free associate. It's great, sir. So, if kids start writing, creative writing at a young age. How can they apply the knowledge, the skills that they develop through creative writing as they go on to college or as they pursue their careers? I guess uh, the, the answer would be that it allows younger people to process things better. You mentioned it earlier, for example, uh, a certain sadness in your life. In, instead of, of course, putting it out there in on Facebook as a status, <laughs> call, maybe you just want to put it and lock it in a certain journal. It's just like a question on journaling. When you put things on paper, it helps you process a particular uh, happy or, I guess, um, dirge-like moment in your life. And as you get older, looking back at those journals, assuming kids would want to still look at memories, those kind of those kinds of things will be things you can that will arm you as you get older and help you have a better or keener sense of the world. I see. So how can their parents encourage kids to start creative writing? By and I and I mentioned this earlier, by teaching their kids the value of reading happy. I think creative mm-hmm. writing will not be creative writing if a child does not have that that great appreciation of the power of reading because usually what happens in the beginning when you're a creative writer as a child is because you have cultivated a certain sense of envy of a particular thing that you read let's say a a very fun uh, fairy tale and and because it's living in your mind like a really vivid movie you want to mimic that kind of thing what I'm trying to say is it begins with a sort sense of mimicry 
Mm-hmm. And then you get better at it as you read even more writers. So mm-hmm. again, in terms of that particular sentiment, I think reading is like a domino effect thing that topples into creative writing. So in one video, we actually explored the power of pretend play. And pretend then an- play. One activity that kids can uh, engage in pretend play is through storytelling and story writing. So when you mentioned about reading books, that um, particular article and video of ours came into my mm-hmm. mind. Basically, kids can um, be asked by their parents or their teacher to conceive a story right. and then have their classmates or their family members, since they're stuck at home, fulfill certain roles in that story. So in a sense, as I can see, um, story writing is pretty similar to creative writing. Well, essentially, writing a story is is uh, an aspect of creative writing if you look at it from the umbrella or canopy perspective. So uh, following that train of thought, if you are reading a lot of books, that empowers you as a child to have something more to say because you're you have a concept of what a good short story is. You will not have it if you don't have a, a reading material in the past that informed you or if not informed, empowered you to be a better right. pretend play or storyteller, right? I so I think, again, those things are very much interlocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, sir, moving on to our next um, sure. set of questions. When can kids start engaging in creative writing? Must there be a particular age? Mm, Interesting question because um, I'm assuming you know that a lot of creative writing, formal creative writing classes begin a bit later, right? Exactly. I mean, in the curriculum for kids. And, And there is a good reason for that, Happy. That's because, again, like I've been saying earlier, it's harder to teach a child a sense of maturity and experience when uh, formally writing poems and short stories and plays. They, it, it takes a bit of time for that kind of thing to really develop for a kid. If, say, for example, you start honing a kid's mind into writing poetry, say, or a short story as a child, I guess uh, age will be six, seven, that I'm not saying it's a bit, it, notice that I'm not putting it younger than that. Because again, most likely the filtering, the sense of uh, self-criticism uh, has not yet uh, been developed. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's a string of events. You begin with maybe a bit younger and then you harness it and you and you let the child appreciate the opinions of others. Because see. In a, in a big way, happy. A child's world is quite like the old school perspective of our solar system. It revolves around the kid. So mm-hmm. as they get older, they begin to see how to filter those certain biases that are pro-self and becomes a bit more open to what others think. And and that's why it's hard to teach kids at a very young age creative writing because there is always a ch- chance that, or a great possibility, they won't appreciate criticism, or they mm-hmm. take it against the the writer or the whoever is the teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just putting it out there so that we don't uh, pamper the idea that it's easy to teach creative writing for kids. Again, it's a process. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that they teach it around uh, maybe in K to 12 terms when they reach grade eight or nine because that's the assumption that's where the assumption comes in that the kids are more ready to take criticism Mm -hmm. but i guess if you're not writing for publication just to be fair happy you just want a a sense of a child developing the writing skills and maybe later on letting that evolve into real creative writing any age is fine so then i checked the curriculum sir the k-12 curriculum and i noticed that Creative writing seems to be looked at or considered as a subject when kids are in their grades 11 to 12. Exactly. And so there, was... that's, that's my point. But but that does okay, don't take it against them. That's that's a perspective from uh, pedagogy. It's not really so much an affront to the kids. <laughs> I'm just saying, Happy, that there, 
there is always a way to teach kids creative writing and, and balance that with language techniques and reading skills in their younger years. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very perfectly fine for them to understand and write creatively. But if they, when they're ready to to take real criticism, that's when uh, I guess uh, those people in the education mastery classes <laughs> say that they're ready for again the point is i do understand why but mm -hmm. th that doesn't mean of course you cannot let the child appreciate and read and write and read and write again at a much younger age i can just imagine sir um if a parent is really that interested in developing their child's creative writing skills so getting the child engaged in reading a lot of books mm -hmm. exactly in different genres and they and they ask their kids, so what have you learned from this book? Does it inspire you to write anything? So the parent is basically encouraging the child to write. Right. And then if ever there's a significant event in the child's life, then the parent can encourage the child to write their emotions or write the child's emotions in whatever form, be it in a poem or in a short story. It can be or a maybe fictional. An essay. So now I'm thinking, sir. Um, when you mentioned about the constructive criticism part, mm -hmm. once he has that in place, so he has the self-control from b uh, bottling or embodying his emotions in written form, mm -hmm. and then you have the ability to accept criticism or constructive feedback. I think that is very helpful for a child, but of course, it Definitely. totally depends on the parent. I guess the parents will play a big role in... I don't know the exact word for it, but uh, preparing uh, an ambiance, uh, an atmosphere that is creative writing and reading friendly. Mm. I'm not saying that the parent has to put up a library around, surrounding the child. I'm just saying that those little things mean a lot in, in, in the process. So to directly uh, uh, comment on your statement, parents will have a, bl a big role definitely in harnessing this creative writing path for their child. Mm -hmm. for sure. sure, let's get up close and personal. I mean, we've noticed that you've written a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You've won a lot of competitions. Sir, what inspires you to write? What inspires me to write? Um, when I was, I have a good answer for that, I think. When I was a bit younger, and I guess when you are starting to con conceive yourself as a poet or a dreamy-eyed writer, there is this great sense of inspiration or the so-called muse happy. But uh, what I learned as I got older is that the muse, the so-called thing that fuels your writing fire, so to speak, is overrated. There's really no fixed thing to inspire somebody to write. You just have to write. They, they say the first rule in writing is not to look for the inspiration, but um, to write. First rule in writing is to write. So although, yes, it helps if you're, say, in a convenient place, like say you've, you've been to a particularly dreamy a vacation that fuels your writing, fine. You've been heartbroken. A lot of people do that. They write when they're sad. Fine. But ultimately, creative writing uh, trains you to write whatever the situation is. So there's no ideal inspiration. But mm -hmm. okay, since I, I understand, of course, that you're asking me for something very personal, uh, I'm inspired by a lot of things. Let's say I'm when I was younger, happy, I was inspired by my childhood. So that became the kind of thing that would overrun the pages of my first books. And then Phenomena, mm -hmm. at some point, uh, we had experienced Typhoon Ondoy, so I decided I wanted to write poetry that depicts the sadnesses that came with that particularly rueful uh, flooding. And then the death of my mother became a particular subject in the third book. And nowadays, uh, happy my writing is more conceptual. I'd mm -hmm. like to think that my concerns have changed over time. And that's something that creative writers and children should take heart about. Because whatever you're writing as a younger person, that will definitely evolve in time. Mm -hmm. So there is no end to it. So you started writing about when you were a child. But I started reading when I was a child. I would try to write, but I had no one to show it to, if that's your, your question. 
<laughs> Sir, um, how did you find out that you really want to be a writer? I don't know. Really happy. I guess it just comes to you. Uh, I guess if you've been reading a lot of books as a child, again, that this is why I'm saying those things are correlated. Uh, you probably would want to try out or dabble in writing as well at some point. But it only just really became clear to me that I wanted to pursue that uh, late in high school and when mm -hmm. I entered college. Sure, let's expound on that. Because um, I do understand you have two undergraduate courses related and then you took a master's in creative writing. So yeah. there are a lot of students who are considering shifting from one course to another because they're trying to find out what exactly is it that they are interested in. Mm. How come um, or how come or what made you to decide to what pursue. made you decide to take two undergraduate courses before you took up a master's? Because um, interestingly, in high school, I did not know that there was a course called creative writing at the UP. So when I applied, I wanted to do whatever is connected to writing, which obviously is journalism. So I took up Jorn. But then happy, I found myself being lured into the English department in mm -hmm. Palma Hall, which is a different part of UP. And I started to take uh, elective courses in poetry, writing short stories, plays. That's when I realized that I wanted to a second degree in creative writing. And, and by the time I pursued my, my master's, I was already keen on writing poetry. So I guess the latter part, the, the, that part about um, graduate studies, that was more or less already fixed. But for, I guess, students who are still uh, not sure where they want to go, I, I can't really tell them that, hey, why don't you transfer to creative writing? It's better. <laughs> it's totally unfair. What if they're pursuing a degree in science? That's one less scientist we will have. Kidding aside, yeah, if, if creative writing is something you can do on the side, fine. There are a lot of poets in the Philippines who are not even graduates of creative writing. So mm -hmm. most of them are graduates of science degrees, and they, that informs their poetry. Again, mm -hmm. there is no particular rule that says you have to really take it as a degree. Okay. Sir, when you were a budding writer, like you've started writing books, poems mm -hmm. that are being published, uh, what made you decide to join or submit entries to competitions here and abroad? There's an easy answer to that, Happy. You want affirmation. Uh, when you are a young writer, you want to seek uh, the, the nod, so to speak, of the older guards in this, mm. in, in, that, that what they will tell you that your work is important. So... I guess it's hubris to begin with. You just want to be, get your work out there and get praised. But at some point, you realize that your duty is not to the award, but to the reader, to the stranger that you might not ever know. Because every time you write a good work of creative writing, it will affect other people and in, in a way immortalizes the work. So the sooner you let go of the ego of the self, and sorry if I'm putting up too much psychology here, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that in time, it becomes a more of a selfless thing. But mm -hmm. to be very guiltily human about it, happy in the beginning, it's really just for affirmation and pride and com the competitive self who wants to know if you're a good writer or what. Uh, is, also, is that also the reason, sir, why you kept submitting entries to the same international giving, uh, international or national writing prize or award-winning body? Because after you submitted or after you won your first Palanca Award, you submitted another entry and you won. So I was just wondering um, what keeps you from or what motivates you to continuously submit entries after you've gotten that affirmation that you are good? Because after the affirmation, Happy, comes the confirmation. <laughs> okay. It's like a, a child going from there. To the compil, the so-called compil, the confirmation. I'm, I'm, I'm just messing around. But mm -hmm. actually, as I got older, I dis I decided not to join those contests. I guess, again, in the beginning, happy, you are proud and you want to prove yourself. And if you're winning something, there's a giddiness that comes with it, right? So you notice that I have, well, to be honest, I haven't been joining awards 
for the last say eight years. I'm just keen mm-hmm. on submitting to journals and getting published. Um, hopefully, every 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 year you have a book out or you have a say a suite of poems in some anthology, but not so much the awards because. To, to answer you more directly, I guess it's important if you are, again, just establishing yourself. But at some point, you decide that, hey, give others a chance. They deserve, mm-hmm. we need new voices in our literary community. Got it. And as I was thinking, sir, um, I know you have a point for that question and I totally (laughs) muddled it up. I'm sorry. (laughs) Because, sir, I was just thinking, you know, for kids or not just in writing, even in other fields, they want to join and win a competition because they want to prove themselves. Right. Exactly. Even after that, they continue engaging in that extracurricular activity or that particular world. Because, because it became a passion it. for them. Exactly. Come on. Yeah. It, it, why not, right? Again, maybe I'm just not as competitive as, say, <laughs> Michael Jordan was. So those people, yeah, they keep joining the awards. And yes, I guess your point there is if you have a passion for something and you really want to excel at it and you want that kind of giddiness, sure, by all means. Mm-hmm. Creative writing doesn't, again, stop with your first book. It's a lifelong commitment. So having reached that point wherein you've proven yourself and you still and you very much love writing, what yeah, do you think definitely. are the factors or qualities that will make an aspiring writer thrive in the writing world? Mm, I mentioned it earlier. What one is openness to criticism. Mm-hmm. If you are quite the sensitive type, most likely you will be discouraged. But again, don't be discouraged. Therefore, that's the right, I guess, first okay. advice to a new writer. And two, in particular, if you're writing poetry, and I always tell this to my students in college, learn to read the lines before reading between the lines. A lot of people think poetry, for example, in particular, is all about meaning and elaborate punch lines. But no. Poetry is all about reading what makes the language work. You can always delay meaning, and meaning is not as important as meaningfulness anyway. So if only if you have uh, watchers or if you have a set of audience who's right, interested in writing poetry, that's, I guess, a good start. Let's lose this idea that poetry is meaning. Mm-hmm. Poetry is language, and meaning can wait. I see it. So it's really the construct, um, the ability to extra- accept constructive criticism or constructive criticism. feedback. Yeah, and at the, at the same time, a love or a passion for language. I see. So if for kids who don't have parents who are writers who are not that in love, I guess, with writing, they can join guilds? Well, there, there are many uh, workshops in the Philippines. It's a good thing that you mentioned it. Uh, any kid who wants to write, they, I think there are many courses online. You can just Google it up. There are a lot of uh, famous Filipino writers who particularly write for kids. So I guess those are the best uh, first uh, option to look at when you're mm-hmm. considering joining Are there workshops. experienced writers who are actually mentoring young writers? A lot of a lot of them are, but the, the thing though is some of them would charge something for for mentorship. Mm-hmm. But I guess happy the better advice would be to for the kids to find those uh, national workshops that allow them to that give free lessons. Again, I, I cannot answer for sure if the if you can if, if the kids right now can find free workshops, but there are many writers who will be willing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, training or mentorship but again it takes time okay just to mm-hmm. be very clear yes sir um to our teach my child families professor toledo has prepared a poem oh yeah the poem yes sir i'll read it okay the, the poem is daphne discovering gravity and i wrote it for my daughter when she was still a bit younger and a part of me was already anticipating getting older and the, the little estrangements that come with children getting a bit older. Daphne discovering gravity for Moira. The way she does it, her growing body falling and falling 
on the soft mattress, again falling and bouncing back. You would think nothing on earth can do her harm. That as she repeats this over and over, her natural glee, the sheer tenderness of this act, should make up for all the things you've done wrong. Every misstep, every faltering, bruised palms, sprains, the automatic scattering of her tiny fingers, always breaking her fall, when you kept failing, failing again to catch her, when you were not around, unlike today, arms outstretched and waiting, now that you are ready and she is not, now that she doesn't need the slow, scarred comfort and presence of your hands. Thank you, sir. I'm sure. sure a lot of parents can relate with the feelings that are involved. Idea of that a little estrangement kapag when your child gets a bit more distant because she's getting more mature. And your child... It's not a sad poem the way other people might read it though. Let me just clarify that. <laughs> it, it's, um, in some way, it's also happy because, I mean, parents can and, see yeah. that they've raised their kids well and they can stand up on their own two feet. That's exactly the point there too. <laughs> So I guess all poetry can be read in many ways. Got it, sir. Um, any last words to our aspiring poets? Um, again, let's let's try to. I don't want to sound prescriptive, but if any of your uh, viewers are interested in writing poetry, just consider what this this particular little tip. Read the lines instead of reading between the lines. There's so much in poetry that you can savor without putting that heavy weight of meaning over it. That's it. Okay, hey guys, read the lines. That is very important. Realize. Thank you so much, Professor Toledo, for sharing Thank it with us, me. your time to give us your insights and let us know about your experiences and give us your expert tips on how kids who are aspiring to become creative writers themselves can go ahead and pursue their craft. Yep. Anytime. Teach, thank you. Thank you, sir. To our Teach My Child family, we hope you enjoyed this discussion slash interview with Professor Toledo. If you like this video, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. I yes, please. <laughs>